Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be reviewing Episode 3, so the episode came out last night, we've watched it, and this is definitely the best episode so far, I do think. There's some really interesting stuff that we have to talk about, especially to do with that death at the end of the episode, and also the fact that potentially some characters may be leaving for a while, and you know, there's lots of stuff to talk about, so I really enjoyed this episode, it was very good possibly the best episode so far out of the three that we've seen okay so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any dc tv videos later this year all right so let's start with this so we have this new villain in this episode i'm gonna call her spider woman because i don't know what her name was and i don't think they dropped like a super villain name so she shoots spider webs she has spiders Yes, Spider-Woman is a character in Marvel, but we're going to call her Spider-Woman for now, alright? So, this Spider-Villain, she kills a guy, and this guy was with William, and so, you know, there is some sort of connection. William lies to Kara in the episode, and so we have this whole saga of them sort of going back and forth, that being Kara and William, but then you have this villain, and by the end, Kara has fought her a few times, she goes to her apartment, she fights her. It's a cool scene, she's shooting spider webs and everything like Spider-Man, and so yeah, that was good. And then, by the end of the episode, she's killed. And she's killed by some sort of shadow, and I just literally, verbally said, what the hell is going on right here? I started freaking out, I was like, oh my god, what the heck is this? I'm sure many of you guys had the same reaction because you weren't expecting that and what the hell was it? It was some sort of shadow that came out of the ground. So what killed her? It was someone that she was working for, she, someone that needed to tie up a loose end which would be her because you know Supergirl and everyone were beating her up essentially. So was that the fire fun? That Was that to do with them? I think it is, I don't think it's to do with you know Malafaic or anything like that. I definitely get the impression that it's to do with Leviathan and, and what's going to happen later in the season because that shadow, man, I was like, holy shit, what is that? I'm so intrigued. That bit got me very excited and definitely elevated the episode for me because I love mysteries and especially when they sort of just come out of nowhere and that came out of nowhere. I'm like, who the hell is that? So I'm very excited to carry on and find out who that shadow villain is, but I think it's something to do with Leviathan. And so, also in the episode, we had Kara and Lena, there was a whole storyline that has been continued on. It's, you know, Lena pretending to be friends with Kara, she's doing a very impressive job at that. And we have Kara and she's afraid to, you know, go see Lena because, you know, they haven't properly hung out since she told her she was Supergirl. So Kara is stress eating, she's eating donuts, classic Kara, love it. And then she goes, she flies to freaking Paris, there's this really amazing scene where she goes messy and then she's flying away from Paris and I love that scene. That was really, really cute, I would say, because that is so in the vein of Kara and, you know, she flies to Paris just to get some, you know, lunch or something, some coffee or some tea for Lena. So I thought that was really cute, I thought that bit was very nice. And so, you know, they have lunch, they talk together, and so Lena is still lying to Kara face to face, and she gets Kara to go to Fort Summit, and Alex questions this because, you know, it's illegal, and so Kara has to decide between what's moral and what is right that she believes to be, you know, a good friend, essentially. And so by the end of the episode, she gets Lex's journals, and she is able to decipher it along with Hope, who is obviously Eve, and so she's able to decipher it and it's revealed by the end of the episode, the final frame. She is able to use Q waves for mind control. Lex was working on this and now she knows how to do that. That's what she wants to do. She doesn't trust humans. She wants to manipulate humans to become, you know, less flawed and easier to be around. And when you think of it, she is really doing villainous stuff. This is trying to manipulate human minds. And also she is doing what she hated Kara doing to her. She is lying behind her back face to face. She's doing the exact same thing. So I think when Kara finds out she's going to be broken and it's going to go the same way. So Lena's kind of a hypocrite. But that being said, I can see why she is so upset. And obviously we're just going to have to wait and see 
what's going on, but I'm kind of liking it. There is sometimes a bit too much exposition, if you don't know what exposition is. It's when they're explaining what they're going to do to you. Sometimes a little bit too much, maybe at the start of the episode, talking with Hope. What am I going to do? What I need to do? But that's, you know, a necessary thing for the show, so I can turn a blind eye for that. And so, we get this stuff with Malefaic as well in this episode, so this is heavy to do with Jean and Malefaic. And so, Malefaic returns to Kelly's apartment. He becomes Pete, a old friend, like a military friend of Kelly, and he visits her at Obsidian. And so essentially he disguises himself, he is able to get Kelly to fix what was wrong with inside of him. He couldn't use this special power that Martians have due to him being in the Phantom Zone, it was taken away from him. So Malefic in the end, after they've had a few fights, he escapes and he gets the power of, I think they called it Inception actually back, or something like that. And so he's able to control minds and, you know, make you do stuff. And there was this really good scene that reminded me of Avatar The Last Airbender with the blood bending because he was able to move his hands. He was able to control her in her mind and she was doing stuff and it looked very, very sort of ragdoll-like, sort of cracking into places. And, you know, she was about to kill herself, basically. And it was a really good scene. I really liked how that was done. And so with Jean... This episode, he is a lot of the time with Nia, and they are essentially accessing his memories. So there are flashbacks filtered through Nia's memories, so he can remember, say, young Malefaic, young version of his father, played by Carl Lumley, who returned this episode. He's always great. And so it's filtered through her memories, so it's all in human form. So that's why you see all the people, and you see David as his normal self. And so you find out what really happened to Malefaic and why Jean couldn't remember him. And so he keeps on visiting Malefaic whilst he was on Mars until he turned with the White Martians and he was eventually sent to the Phantom Zone. But the big revelation in this episode is that it wasn't his dad who took away their memories because that's a crime in Martian culture. It was actually Jean. So that comes as a massive shock to him because that is the greatest you know, disservice you could do in Martian society, apparently. And so he removed the memories of Malefaic from his dad, from himself as well. And he is now questioning what is his morality? Is he good? Is he bad? Why did he do this? This is a massive crime in Martian culture. So I love that. I love that revelation. I was kind of shocked that it was him. And I thought it was done really well, I really liked the flashbacks, we saw young Malefaic, we saw him as he grew up a bit, so there was a new actor, and it was all very neatly done, and then by the end of the episode, Malefaic gets away, he's got his powers back, and now he's even more powerful than before. Okay, so let's go back and talk about some other stuff in this episode. So first off, I want to say... Have they been dressing Kara in the same clothes, or like the same style of clothes for her reporting stuff, like these three episodes? I feel like she's worn the same clothes. Is that just me? I'm not sure. I just wanted to point that out. Let me know if you recognize that in the comments down below. But let's talk about some Catco stuff. So we have the whole clickbait thing going on. They talk about what's a real article, what do we need to do. They talk about we need a sparkly death. You know, people want to read about that. Oh, look, our site is doing so well now because we're you know, going into this sort of clickbait stuff, talking about, oh, which celebrity deaths, which, you know, stuff like that. And so they're not looking for the truth. They're looking for trashy news, basically. So Andrea has a smaller part in this episode, but she talks about, you know, yeah, she agrees with William, this guy who they're trying to investigate the sort of billionaire or whatever, like this very successful guy in, you know, a scientific field. He dies. He's only 30. And Kara is suspicious, and then Kara obviously finds out who has done this, and you know, there's some sort of motivation behind it. But they don't care. Katko doesn't care right now because they're in a stage where they are sort of into this clickbait stuff, and you know, they want to continue to do that forward. And so, I've got to say, it's kind of getting a little bit annoying that they keep on saying clickbait. I think they've said it like 15 times in the past few episodes. It seems a little repetitive at times with that Catco storyline with Andrea and William, and William's a bit suspicious in this episode. He's getting money payments through a random guy on the bench, and he was meeting that guy who actually died earlier in the episode, so he's doing some shady stuff. 
I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't particularly like William or Andrea. I think I like Andrea a little bit more, but I think William is just fine. Like, I don't think the actor is that good either. But, you know, that's probably the one weakness so far this season is probably William and, you know, a bit of the stuff with Catco. But, you know, apart from that, this episode was really great and there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later for my trailer breakdown for episode 4. So catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.